and to host Toulouse and what promises to be an entertaining semi-final. My name is Mark, let's talk rugby. Lancer versus Toulouse is the first of the two Champions Cup semi-finals on this weekend. It's in the Viva Stadium in Dublin, Saturday 29th of April. Kickoff is 3 p.m. BST. We are going to start with a look at the two teams, starting with Leinster. So fullback Hugo Keenan, right wing Jordan Larmer, centres Gary Ringrose and Charlie Natai, left wing Jimmy O'Brien, halfbacks Ross Byrne and James Gibson Park, front row Adrian Porter, Dan Sheen and Tyke Furlong, second row Russell Maloney and James Ryan, back row Caelan Doris, Josh Van der Fleer and Jack Conan. The replacements then, John McGee, Keane Healy, Michael Alalatoa, Jason Jenkins, Ryan Baird, Luke McGrath, Harry Byrne and Kieran Frawley. For Toulouse then, fullback Thomas Ramos. Right wing, Juan Cruz Malia. Centres, Pierre-Louise Baresi and Peter Aki. Left wing, Mathis Labelle. Halfbacks, Roman Entemac and Anton Dupont. Front row, Cyril Bai, Pito Mawaka, Dorian Aldeheri. Second row, Richie Arnold and Emmanuel Mafo. Back row, Jack Willis, Thibaut Flamon and Francois Cross. The replacements then, Julia Marchand, Rodrigue Netti, David Ainu, Alexandre Roma, Reinhard Elstadt, Alban Placines, Paul Garo and Arthur Routier. Okay, so team news for Lancer. Robbie Henshaw is out, so Natai gets the nod at inside center. He's been fairly decent this year when he has played, especially in the URC. Generally, he has, um, you know, he has been playing with um, ring rows as much though so it's going to be interesting to see how that combination goes Ryan Baird and Josh Van der Fleer both pass fit to play Van der Fleer in the starting team Baird on the bench Baird you know he can cover second row and back row especially six so good to have him on there but hopefully he is you know completely fit and we're not going to have any kind of late withdrawals from any of the players it is also the first of possibly five major tests for Ross Byrne in the absence of Johnny Sexton at 10 and Jimmy O'Brien on the left wing because James Lowe is out. And, you know, Lancer may miss Lowe's big left boot because it gets him a lot of ground and sometimes gets him in sticky situations and is very good as well at, you know, um, in combination with the the back three kind of exploiting space at the back and moving the opposition back three around as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how that goes because Toulouse really are a big kicking team as well. For Toulouse then, Flamon is in the back row with Jelanche out. Jelanche, I think probably his club season may be over, but hopefully we see him for the Rugby World Cup. Mao back against a nod over Moshan at Hooker. I think you know, Marshawn, when he does come off the bench, he's going to have a big impact in the game. He loves getting over the ball, winning turnovers and winning penalties and all around carrying and, and you know, just having a big impact, I think, when he comes on. LaBelle's performance could be one of these deciding factors in the game because that guy has absolutely serious gas. And if he gets in behind Lencer, it's probably going to be a try. But defense is more than just a little suspect for him as well so depending on which side you know um, really comes out in terms of his performance there maybe we'll see him score a wonder try and maybe we'll see him get caught out in defense for a lancer try as well you know um, can't really discount it when two teams of this quality go at each other they're both going to find you know weaknesses and exploit them i think Both teams are missing big names, and this is going to be a test of their squads, but they're both just packed quality squads as well. Benches probably 
you know, going to have a big impact in deciding the game in that last 20 minutes as well. Let's have a look at how the two teams actually got to the semi final. So, Leinster, round one, Rassi 92 away, they won 42 10. Round two, Gloucester home, 157 0. Round three, Gloucester away, 149 14. Round four, Racing home, they won 36 10. Into the last 16, then Ulster at the Viva, 130 to 15. Quarterfinal, Leicester at the Viva, 155 to 24. Toulouse, then round one, Munster away, 118 13. Round two, Sale at home, 145 19. Round three, Sale away, 127 5. Round four, Munster at home, 120 16. Last 16, Bulls at home, 133 9. And quarterfinal Sharks at home, 154 20. So both teams, big scores, you know, margins as well in their quarterfinals. And neither really tested that much in the knockout stages as well. So this, you know, is going to be, it's going to really be about which one is more battle hardened coming into this, I think, because, you know, they're both going to go hammer and tongs at it and we'll see who cracks first really this is a rematch of last year's semi-final Leinster won that one 40 to 17 Leinster um you know also there's some talk in the English media about it being unfair how Leinster are at home for their semi-final and their like the final but well, first of all the Biba is not Leinster's home uh, the RDS is, and I know some people say, well, it's in the same city, but still, it, it, it's not their home ground. And when you look at Ireland, like, where else are you going to host a semi final or a final? You know, we've only got like one big rugby stadium. And, you know, if they're looking outside rugby, they could go to Crow Park. But, um, you know, what happened was basically it was supposed to be hosted in England. I think actually at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, and they pulled out. So Ireland then had to step in at the last minute, and the Viva was chosen as the venue. So it's not like you know uh, Leinster were looking for it to to be on home soil. It just so happened that England couldn't do it, and now their journalists are complaining about it. Well, you know, complain about your own your own stadiums that they can't get ready for um, a big competition like this. But also, like, it's the first time in 10 years that the final has been hosted in Ireland. And if Leinster do get there, it's a big if because this is a an amazing to lose side of the plane. But if they get there, they will be only the second Irish side to play the Champions Cup or Heineken Cup's final, whatever you want to call it, in their home country. So the last was Ulster in 1999, 24 years ago so if that's an unfair advantage for ireland well then what about the fact that you know england have hosted eight finals the most of anyone in the tournament's history and also four english teams have won the heineken cup on home soil plus in the last four years both saracens and exeter have won the champions cup on home soil and england have hosted three I think three of the last four Heineken Cup finals. So, you know, if you're talking about unfair, well, you know, I, I don't, either way, I don't begrudge whoever gets the final. I just kind of, it annoys me when, you know, people come out with bullshit like this. It's clearly, you know, it's got to be hosted somewhere and it has to be decided before the start of the season because you, uh, you know, you've got to get ready to host it and like, the hosts for this year were decided before that and they weren't ready. So then Ireland had to step in at kind of at the last minute and take it up. So, you know, I, I don't think the, the criticism is fair. I think there's certain sections of the English media who see everything as unfair against them and never see anything as being, you know, when they get the, um, advantage as it were never see that as being unfair on their opposition so you know uh, stick it in your pipe and smoke it i guess with that but leo cullen um he's been talking this week about you know leinster going to be braced for a to lose backlash in this game because 
you know, said this is a repeat of last year's semi-final. And he said that Toulouse maybe were a little bit fatigued, having played 100 minutes against Munster in last year's quarterfinal, and then having to travel as well. And he also said, you know, that Toulouse, they got a big pack and quite, plenty of quality throughout their side. And, you know, looking forward to a big physical challenge and just kind of, you know, the general talk here about, like, these are the games that you want to play in, etc. Um, but, yeah, he's right. Like, they, they really are two teams full of quality. Look, all over the pitch, like, you know, individual duels or even, like, um, you know, um, things like the two back rows against each other. It's just going to be an amazing matchup as well. You've got Gibson Park versus DuPont, like two very different players, but both very influential on how their team does. Both give their, their teams great go forward in their own way. Like DuPont is just a special, special player. Like, um, you know, it's kind of like he's definitely once a generation um, nine, and it's always a privilege to see a player like that because you never know, you know, when the last time is that you're actually going to see a player because injury is so cruel these days. But hopefully, you know, uh, no big injuries because we've seen already in both of these squads like some really influential players being injured in them as well. So we don't want to see any more in the semi final, but also like, you know, match up between Van der Fleer and Flamand as well at seven. And just again, that those entire back rows against each other both packed with quality players and I think a lot of teams around Europe and around the world would love to have any of those players in their the back row and you got Keenan versus Ramos in the full max as well like you know Keenan has really stepped up his attacking game this season and it's going to be interesting to see you know how he goes against Ramos who you know loves to to take chances and loves the attacking game and also is very pivotal for Toulouse with his kicking from the tee as well. Also for Lencer, we got Ross Burn at 10, expecting him to play most of the game because, it's, you know, you got um, Harry Byrne and Crowley on the bench. Crowley is probably going to cover, you know, centres and maybe at a push, um, you know, maybe full back or even wing. But then you got Harry Byrne, Ross's brother, on the bench as well. Now, he is, he is a fine player and he's a great prospect for the future, but I worry about if he has to come on too early in the game because the guy has, you know, this season was supposed to play a lot more games than he has, and the reason why he hasn't is because he's been injured and it's hard for him to get a run of games in the team. And without a run of games in the team then, the, um, you know, the cohesion there with him at 10 compared to with Ross at the 10, 10 is going to be very different. So it's going to, you know, when, how early he comes on in the game, again, could be a big factor in who's actually going to going to win it. Um, but yeah, you could, you could literally go through both 15s and the benches as well, comparing them. And you're just thinking like, oh, this guy is quality for Lencer, but also this guy is super quality for Toulouse as well. And it's really hard to, you know, I think it's paper-thin margin, honestly, between these two teams. I think that home advantage will maybe play into Leinster's favour, but they have the home advantage because they finished as the number one seed. So, you know, if you end up doing that, well, you deserve your home advantage. Same with La Rochelle. Being number two seeds, they've got home advantage in their semi-final as well, or home country advantage in their semi-final, same as Leinster. So, you know, it's it's based on performance. It's not some kind of, you know, unfair, like, why are they getting it? Well, everybody knows what they're getting it. But, yeah, um, two hugely quality teams. I think it's going to be an absolute cracker of a game. Probably going to be a tight one, keeping us on the edge of our seats throughout. And I don't know whether it's my head or my heart, is saying this, but I'm going for, for a Lancer win by 7 to 10 points. 